I'm Scott and this is Melody. We're just going to talk about how we got started. Originally the store was Old School Woodworks. It's the same account that I have now but I have changed the name. I sold lumber, I bought tools, mm -hmm. and I sold a few tools. Mainly I sold lumber because I had a lumber mill. Back I remember the first thing I sold. Oh you? It was when Shane, our son, was a toddler and I was able to sell his toddler clothes. I had, Shane didn't care, but I had a lot of clothes that were mini Bowden and you could almost get all your money back selling them. So I remember, that's where I, I actually, I actually remember that because like you were listing them and I was like, mm -hmm. this is a waste of time. Like I'm selling like guy stuff. Nobody is going to want to buy used kids clothes. I mean, I, I probably said it up. 25 for a toddler shirt and got 18 to 20 back for it. I mean, it was I remember Crazy. she made like a lot. Yeah. And I and I remember thinking that, well, nobody's going to buy clothes. Nobody's going to buy kids' clothes. And if they do, they're just going to return them. Yeah. And, uh, but they didn't. <laughs> but they didn't. And then I was like, yeah. hmm. You know, eBay back then was kind of the Wild West. There was no PayPal. There was no eBay managed shipments. Do you remember how they paid? You could take a money order or a check. Yeah. You probably could have sent cash, but I wouldn't advise that. Yeah. Here, so here's what I did, uh, because I did more selling with the lumber, mm -hmm. is with the lumber, like, you know, you'd email back and forth with the people, and I would be like, all right, I'm sending a hundred, one of them was a hundred board feet of mesquite lumber to Alaska. Do you remember that? Mm -mm. Yeah, well, I do. Yeah, <laughs> and probably I, expensive. Yeah, because it cost me like over $100 shipping. And I'm thinking today, I can't even imagine what that would cost. Yeah. But uh, the person paid me $800. And this would have been in like 99. I shipped it and they agreed to send me a check. I shipped it before I got paid. And I never got burned. Not one time did yeah. anybody take advantage of me. Today, I would never no, do that. No. I would never do that. <laughs> if you had to, if somebody was starting today, obviously it's not the same. What would be something that scared you the first time you sold something? Shipping. Yeah, I think shipping universally is the scariest thing because... Yeah. You've got to get it to we them. We still have friends and relatives, and that's the call we get. Okay, I've sold this. What do I do? So, yeah. And I remember feeling like that, too. So we rock along, and we buy and sell some things, and she gets involved, and the store goes just nuts, and I'm not selling just lumber and cool stuff anymore. It was wiglets and wigs and all that <laughs> stuff. But there was, when we decided to treat it like a business, there was something that Melody bought that the first time she had to ship it, caught us off guard on the pricing. Do you remember what that was? Those little bracelets. The little bracelets. Yeah. So here's what we thought. We didn't... It's got to be like 59 cents, yeah. right? They're yeah. tiny. Yeah. We, we figured they'll go in an envelope and yeah. they don't weigh more than five sheets of paper. Oh. And so we had priced them. We had like, what, 1,500 of them? These... Bunch. I'll put a picture up, but we had these little leather wrap bracelets mm -hmm. and we thought that they'd ship for 50 some cents. Well, I looked it up. And like a just a, a envelope like you would mail a letter in is was at the time like fifty nine cents. I go, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so no, uh, when she got down to the post office, the lady was like, "Well, that's like three dollars and something." Yeah. We were like, "We only charge like two fifty for this thing because we we were going to sell them all, and if you have fifteen hundred of them and you make two dollars each, we're... well, and I was mailing it in just a regular envelope yeah. <laughs> and she said it could get stuck in the machine you could get this back you need a pad because it it had yeah. you know that's just made for paper and there was no tracking number so no. you know truthfully yeah we lost money on the first few we sold but one of the things i would tell a new person is you're going to lose some money when you're first getting started you're probably going to make a mistake at yeah. some point there's a definite learning yeah. curve but i spent going to school tens of thousands of dollars going to school for people to teach me things and we both remember the lesson on the envelopes and it cost us two dollars three dollars the other big shipping one i remember and this was more recent last few years our son is selling now yeah <laughs> i know what this is and he sold was it a game station no no or? my son sold a vintage apple computer and it was in that four to six hundred dollar range and Melody was helping him, or I don't remember who shipped it, but we were helping him get it shipped. And when he was looking at the offer 
uh, one of us asked him, well, where is it going to? And that makes a huge difference. Makes a big difference when you're shipping something like a computer mm-hmm. uh, on whether or not you can take an offer. And Shane was like, it's, it's going to Arkansas. So a, uh, he didn't tell me, but he looked at it and saw AK. That's Arkansas. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> so you're going to make mistakes. That's okay. Yeah, that's Alaska. Yeah. <laughs> so. Okay, in case you're keeping notes, um, it's a those are cheap learning lessons. After once we started treating this like a business, you know, we started going and buying more, like uh, because that's the fun part of the job. And we have both picked up things along the way that were. Super cool. So what is your favorite single individual find? Um, it's from your Air Force estate. He had been to an Air Force mistake, Air Force mistake, <laughs> Air Force estate that I didn't even go the first day. It was like an hour and a half away. Yeah. And I didn't want to go that far. But he came home with some cool stuff and sold a watch band, Seiko watch band. For- I think it was 125 mm-hmm. but but it was a watch band. There was no watch, okay. but it was like late 60s metal watch band. And he, we, we knew nothing. A, last day, I'm going to go. Yeah. And we were, all, I, we were just picking. It was pick up, make a pile. You got stuff really cheap. And I think this estate sale had been going on like four days and still stuff everywhere. Everywhere. And so we had already left. We were in the car. We'd split up. We were in different parts of the house and you were outside. I was doing in the house because this estate had snakes on the ground too. So I stayed in the house. I didn't want to go. What I want to point out here is that (laughs) that my my stories are chronological I stayed inside because there were snakes, rattlesnakes and copperheads on this land. And uh, I got a butter tub, um, watch parts in it, watch heads. And I didn't think anything about it. So we were down the road going home. And Scott said, did you find any watch stuff? I said, yeah, I found a watch. I found a butter tub that had to be repaired or broken. She said just some of the watches. They were Seiko, though. (laughs) And so he literally pulled off the road it's like where where is it i've got to find it and uh and found it we were looking at it and they were they were like taped together broken yeah. and i knew that they'd be worth a little bit so i posted it on instagram and a picture of it and immediately i start getting offers and somebody you need to follow on instagram if you're not already following is a guy time with pop and this guy sends me a note a message on Instagram says, dude, I don't think you know what you have. And he proceeds to tell me what all of these watches are. And we sold all of them within one day for $3,300. That, that's got to be it for me. One of the things that we do is uh, we're both really competitive. And I think that sometimes on video, people are like, wow, you're, you're, like, you're trying to beat your wife. Yeah. First of all, if we go out and I listen at that estate sale... I killed it, and she crushed me with the watches, and I could not be happier. Yeah, it, it's, it's fun. It's fun, and if you're listening, it's a on, fun competition. I'll 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 play the soundtrack. She just snuck up behind me. She goes, "You missed something." Filson. <laughs> no way. Yeah. <laughs> I did better than you. I'm better than you. Yeah. <laughs> like it doesn't hurt anybody's because feelings. I found something cool. <laughs> yeah, I want to win because we have yeah. fun doing that. Yeah. And but if she wins, I win. So there's it's not a it's not ugly it's like fun. that. It's fun. So my let me let me see what would be my my favorite pick of all time is so much harder because I found so much better stuff than you. <laughs> so let me. You know, for me, favorite a lot of times isn't necessarily what I made the most money on. My favorite would probably be maybe the leather jacket with the the pinup girl on the back. Oh, and it was yeah. painted for nose cone art. Um, first of all, super cool. Mm-hmm. Pulled it at the bins. Yeah, it came from the bins. Came from the bins. Uh, but what makes that one super cool is I, I think I listed it for 850 It was a modern jacket with an actual professional artwork, individual, one of a kind, done on the back. And I had it listed, and I got a note from the artist's daughter. And she was like, hey, we're doing a family thing. And I was able to get it back to the family. So for me, that's 
that's way up there. Yeah. That's Do special. you have a favorite find of mine? Something that I brought home that you were like, oh yeah, this is awesome. It was some of the Mexico art, the the little pink dog. Oh, I, uh, oh Jimenez. Jimenez yes. was a uh, 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 and you, you did brought a, home a doll collection that I, I, did. I just I brought loved. home a doll collection. I'm a doll collector. Well, it was a lot of folk <laughs> art. There's a lot of folk yeah, art, and some yeah. of the stuff was unbelievable. The paintings too. Yeah, the ones that were on the uh, what's that called? That There's a, a lot of stuff. That, I mean, you. I'm thinking Gustav or Gustavo or something like um, that. But I don't know. We'll have to look it back up. I uh, like a, a Maria. Oh, De Salvo? De... Something like that. We'll think of it in a minute. But anyway, it was incredible yeah, stuff. Cool. I think my favorite of yours is we were at that place in Corsicana, Texas. And there was a thrift store over there that gave us permission to go through their attic. Yeah, we were crawling and, around up in the Yeah, attic. we were crawling around this attic. And there was a lot of, like... You know, um, what's that White House Chico, black market White House, or black market. stuff yeah, like that? There's a lot of that, of that stuff, but Melody pulled, and I have a picture of it. I'll put it up there. She pulled a World War II era personal denim jacket that a Navy soldier had, and a sailor had, and at every port of call, he had had it embroidered on the back. Yeah. Jacket was torn up. It was kind of rough. Somebody wore it. Just ridiculously I th ridiculously cool a once in a lifetime find yeah. a lot of these estate sales are actually what we call private picks and i think it's important for a new ebayer to know because it doesn't just happen i tell everybody what we do and mm -hmm. i offer to help people sort and make sure they don't make a mistake all the time and lots of people take me up on it that I'm never going to buy anything and I'm not going to make any money and they're not going to make any money off me. But after years and years and years of this, I get into places other people don't get into. I mean, was Word that fair? Word of mouth. Word of mouth. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I, um, I think that it's absolutely something that if you're just starting out that you need to work on developing those contacts for people that know you're going to treat them fairly you're going to pay what you can afford to pay, not necessarily what it would sell for. And over time, that ends up getting you into places that other yeah. resellers don't get into. You'll develop yeah. context. Don't be afraid when you go to a garage sale or an estate sale right. to tell people what you're doing. So let's talk about some of the negatives because mm -hmm. we've run into those. What's the biggest negative for you in being a reseller on eBay? <laughs> I mean, other than working with me. <laughs> Uh, the amount of inventory in our house that we haven't listed. I think that's fair. <laughs> I mean, it's... Just got to get rid of stuff. And then we, we, we have too much stuff in the house. Yeah. Every time I do a private pick, um, our, um, for context, our house does not have a, an enclosed garage. We have a carport. Right. And uh, I do have a, a building where I can process everything on my property. Right. That's held. We, we it is. That a, a couple Except of I filled ago. it up with one locker, and yeah. it's the, the sweats locker. Well, it was a whole store of yeah. vintage, vintage sweats. sweats so yeah. It's good. Yeah, yeah. The negative for me in eBay, the thing that we've dealt with that has caused me the most grief is when stuff is missing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like You lose it. <laughs> I, I hate it. You know, you, you know... Oh. You sell I something. I get as upset because I know I don't. You're the one who has to move the tubs the person and and you know you're the one who handles it. So it really yeah. is hard on you. Um, <laughs> I find it most of the time. Most of the time, before yeah. we had an inventory system, when I had maybe a hundred items, I kept track in my head, and I yeah, never lost yeah. anything like that. Like I, I you had one or two bins with stuff in it. So yeah, I mean a hundred items, I could just remember where they were. Yeah. But when we started treating it like a business, of course, we quickly had more than a hundred. We had more than a thousand items. So. <laughs> and the first time something disappeared, and it was like two hours in. Do you remember? <laughs> oh, I don't remember, but you man, I, it was traumatic. So yeah, yeah, when I tell you to create an inventory management system before you need it, do it. <laughs> don't yeah, wait. Yeah. It doesn't need to be complicated. Ours isn't complicated. We have yeah. alphanumeric. Mm -hmm. uh, numbers, we'll put it in that tub and we write down in the SKU what that tub is. And there are, I don't know if you have a video on it, there are ways to go back and look up the date you listed it and you can kind of cheat by checking the bin, if you use so, the bin system. So I just want to make something clear. 
Yes. You don't know if I have a video for them? I do. My yeah, wife sure does not do. watch my videos. <laughs> <laughs> for all, for anybody thinking it's just your friends and family, <laughs> no. There are ways to, to look at it. Yeah, up you can. There are things to help yeah. you. And that's happened just a few times that we've sold It doesn't take many. Sold. We kind of divided things up a long time ago. Um, I was still a school superintendent. So while we're ramping up, I would list some on nights and weekends. She was doing most of the listing. She was doing all of the shipping. After I retired, there was a time we take helped take care of her parents, and she was spending uh, a couple of days down there for doctor's appointments and stuff like that. And I did the shipping. And the first day that I did the shipping, I remember the first day I I'm, I call her like, "What are you?" Doing? And she's printing everything, yeah. cutting these labels out and taping them down. Yeah. And I ordered a Rolo that day. <laughs> Like, it didn't bother me. But, I couldn't. But I like the. I like the roller. I, mean, I can't even imagine cutting and taping them all down. That's so what I was doing. Um, speaking of that, so like ordering the Rolo, I'm real big on, especially for anybody just getting started. Don't spend any money because someone like me recommends it on YouTube. But the, in in that vein, are there some things you think are actually really important to have? Even for a new eBayer, what would you say that they they really do need? If you're just gonna sell every once in a while an item here or there, you don't need a, a, a printer. But if you're gonna start a business and you you need it, I mean, you really do. A few shipping supplies or some clear poly bags, some mailing bags, and some of these are free. If you're shipping Priority Mail or USPS, you can order them; they're free. But you it it'll make it easier. If you're going to ship a hat and you don't have a box for that hat to go in. It, yeah. So. Oh, yeah. So hats yeah. are one of the easiest things for us to sell now mm -hmm. and ship because we have all the supplies. But the first hat, we're like, do you put that in a bag and let it get crushed? I mean, what do you do? We needed a box and couldn't find one. I mean, it can make your life <laughs> if you're not. Oh, I'll, sorry. I'll, you can't say that. <laughs> I don't cuss on my channel, Melody. <laughs> <laughs> but a few shipping supplies, I think, are really important. Yeah. If you're doing clothes, you need a, a a good tape measure, like the fabric type that with yeah. the big letters. Yeah. If you're doing where you're hanging them on the wall. Um, it's not a lot, but there's a few there's things not a that lot. will make it a lot yeah. easier. When you're getting started, there's this rush to feel like you need to go buy things to feel like a business. You don't need to buy anything to feel like a business. You feel like a business when you start putting money in your account. You don't put money in your account by taking money out of your account. But you need very little. And yes, while it helps us if you use the affiliate links, don't ever use the affiliate links to feel like you need to spend money. When you're just starting a business, don't spend anything. Don't spend anything at all if you can help it. Yeah. You, you said that, like, if something's lost or anything, I'm the one that messages them. So yeah. let's talk about customer service a little bit. Because remember, folks, if this is your business, customer service, that's what these people are that are buying from you. What are the parts of it that you find difficult? Like, obviously, we've divided that labor up a little bit. Mm -hmm. Scott usually answers emails. He's just better at wording it than I am. I sometimes start out and you'll say, that sounds mean. And I don't mean to. <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of just blunt. If it's somebody that you don't want to do business with, you need eBay to back you. Right. So explain it better than me. No, no, <laughs> uh, no. I, th I think you said it well. Here's what's funny about it. I'm, I can really write a tactful message and diffuse mm -hmm. things and calm things down, even though normally what happens bothers me way more than it bothers you. I don't yeah, respond that, yeah. that way, but you know, if, if I've got a Buick listed for, you know, $7,000 and I get a $5 offer, I'm mad. And she's I, like, I, I, nah, I she's like, they're, they're, I don't hold grudges. I, was, I move right. She's like, like, they're probably just hoping they can get it for five bucks. And I'm like, I might run them over with it, <laughs> but I can write a more tactful email. Customer mm -hmm. service is really important. It, it's a brain shift on your part that this isn't just a buyer. This isn't just somebody who right. wants your stuff. This is the customer for your business. And if you remember that when you're responding, you don't actually try to run anybody over with a Buick. You send them a note yeah. or, or decline it or whatever, but you do so professionally. One thing we do behind the scenes to help with customer service is 
we take good pictures, you put measurements and all of that stuff so you're not getting a ton of it. Everything right. they need is right there in that listing. I think it's really important. Um, and I actually learned this when I was teaching is when they get it, it shouldn't be a surprise. Yeah. So like yeah. I learned that when I was giving kids a report card, it shouldn't be a surprise when they get a report card. Mm -hmm. They should have known for the entire grading period how it's going. If yeah. I'm selling somebody a shirt, when they get it, they should have a pretty good idea what they're getting. It's not possible for me to make the buyer read the description and look at all the pictures, but I can make sure it's all there if they do. And I think that's a really important part of, yeah. of this. Are there things about this job that make you sad? I don't do well in storage lockers. Yeah. If it's personal, family, and start looking through and stuff, and, and once I find the history and stuff, I have. I got home. Down. <laughs> I, bu I bought a storage locker, and I bought it because it, it, it was obviously had a lot of age to it, lots of dust, had some furniture, hadn't been picked through. And um, so I bought it. I, I was still a superintendent, so I bring it home on the weekend, dump it in my living room, as you do, and Melody's going to sort through the stuff and yeah. start listing things. And I came home, and yeah. she is sitting in my living room floor bawling yeah. because yeah. the history was really, really it tragic. Was yeah. It was tragic. Mm -hmm. And I think that both of us struggle with that a little bit is that, um, you know, the history. The, the not the history isn't always heartwarming it's not always yeah. exciting it's not always good sometimes these things are available because bad stuff happened and i think we both yeah. struggle with that a lot in fact we didn't buy storage lockers for probably three years after that yeah. because that one family's history was so hard to swallow that we kind of backed off for a while mm -hmm. so i and i don't know that we either one of us expected that how do you feel about the money on ebay like, I mean, there's new people, like, it, can you actually make any money doing this? You can't, I didn't believe it. I truly didn't, when I was working at the school, too, and when I went home to work, eBay, I was going to do that for a job. My goal was $40. $40 a day. A day. And I thought, okay, I'm going to have to work hard. I could do this. And he said, I think we can make $100 a day. She started laughing. <laughs> I did. I laughed at you and I thought, no, no way. And it scared me at first, the days when we had $100 days. And it scared me, you know, what if I ever return the... Yeah. I don't know if any of this will make the video. No. I go off so off track. No, but... no, no. I think, I think that's valid, though, because... Mm -hmm. You know, when you first start selling, there is a lot of fear. We were selling those bracelets. We had some belts and all these things. Remember the Enman mm -hmm. sale? Yeah. That's where we bought all of that. Mm -hmm. And and then when you would sell something that would be like $75 or $100, you're like, if they return that, yes. one of us is going to go to prison. <laughs> and, and I'm like, you listed it. You need to remember that if you're selling all $75 items and you get a $75 return, it's just a return. And it doesn't... Yeah. Once you once you grow and we're selling more and the items are higher, per, we've had item we've had five six hundred dollar days now. Okay, and I don't yeah. even think about it. Yeah. We've sold items that were a couple of thousand dollars. Right, and it's but once you're doing it as a business, yeah, you can support yourself. When you sell an item for two thousand one hundred dollars, yeah. And that lady leaves you positive feedback. Yeah. That is like the best feeling in the You're world. Watching though. for that feedback. Yeah. <laughs> you know that's that yes. that jacket you sold. Yeah. So how do you feel? I do most of the customer service, but how do you feel? Uh, and you'll see it on a lot of the comments that eBay doesn't support sellers. How do you feel about that? Do you believe that? Yeah. Why? Why not? We've had returns we didn't agree with. Well, yeah, and and there's a few things that eBay does that bother me but I, I don't feel like they don't support us i i want people to pay as soon as we sell it that still bothers <laughs> are you me listening after ebay <laughs> after all these years is somebody makes an offer take that money when it sold and and on auctions and, but that's more if you know at, when an auction ends that they're not they don't have to it's not automatic that they pay so but that. but the complaint is mm -hmm. And we've had 17,000 sales, and I get it. There are eBayers way bigger than us, but I feel like we've earned an opinion anyway. A after 17,000 sales, do you think that eBay automatically sides with a buyer no matter what? No, no. 
It's not the way it's worked yeah. for us. We and, had negative feedback, and where yeah, if we know in this, if we have negative feedback and we one hundred percent know that we don't deserve it, then we've been able to work with with eBay. I don't think we've ever had it where it wasn't reviewed. No, never. And we've always said if this is a negative that we earned, yeah, yeah, that instead we would try to put a response about what yeah. we, what we what, did. What we've we had did. a few times where it was 100% my fault. <clears throat> 100%. And if I had got a negative, I'm not fighting to take that off. Yeah. I'm going to get on there and own up. Um, but so far for us, eBay has supported us. Yeah, life. You know, my parents owned a brick and mortar and I worked there as a teenager and it's long hours. It's You're paying employees. You've got building you're paying for a building the cost electric, of doing business is yeah and you're there yeah eight to eight every day so so, so i i love it we do ebay do you think that that's what do you think about cross posting I we do some yeah, we use yeah. list perfectly to cross post i think it's great i'm not organized enough i wish i could get everything cross posted and i'm just not organized enough to do it you have to be able to when something sells make sure it's taken down that's hard i think it's a wonderful opportunity because we cross we cross post i don't do a lot of work on etsy and poshmark but we sell things on there and that's because we cross post it i i, I disagree i actually think you're more organized than you think oh thank you <laughs> She would never make that sound if we weren't on camera. That would never happen. So <laughs> no, no. Like this? Like it. That's the first time she touched me since we got married. But I do. I, I think that um, because most of the cross-posting, you're the one who's done it. I don't know. Where, where, do, where do you see eBay going for us in the next five years? Now, full disclosure, starting YouTube has had a dramatic impact on our eBay store because this process, it takes me a long time. And I know there are people who can edit fast and they come up with tons of ideas. And my only idea I'm working from is always like, the what can I do for the person watching this that's actually going to be helpful and how can I edit it to be helpful? And I'm not fast yeah. at that. And you, of course, spend a lot of time helping with your parents. Mm -hmm. So, but eBay is a huge part of our life. If mm -hmm. we need a raise we don't get that on youtube and yeah. we get it on ebay like we're like okay we we gotta we need to make some money this yeah. week yeah we're going on vacation next week yeah, yeah. Some money. somebody should have thought about that two weeks ago but no <laughs> we're gonna do it now uh ebay for us is a much faster return on investment because we already have an established store yeah. and we we know kind of what we're some doing of these other things you get paid once a month yeah and you know eBay so is... where do you see us in five years with ebay I think we're trying to get uh, higher priced items in a smaller store. That, yeah. That's our goal. Here, Here's our goal. Uh, I'll try, try and sum it up at least what it is in my mm -hmm. head is we do not want to make less money. Right. We want to work less and make more money. And the we are never going to list 50 items a day. No. Never going to happen. We don't. Do you want to list 50 items? No. We don't want to. What we want to do is find those items. Like yesterday, I listed four items. I sold two. I made $300. We like that. And so constantly we work on getting better and better and better at sourcing and those items take some work there's there's usually when you're listing an expensive item yeah. you really like lots of pictures you talk yeah. you you know your description yeah. you, there's if and I, i've done it the other way too where i'm listing clothes that are going to be 15 dollars, and i'm listing them quick i put some measurements in and, and go and we've kind of changed our business model i think my message for anybody watching this is that if if we can do this and we can really truly turn it into a tremendous supplemental income that is actually more than my retirement mm -hmm. working when we don't spend 40 hours a week working at this we probably don't spend 40 hours a week together working at this uh especially not since youtube no and, i mean it, it it you know it's helped us i spend a couple of days a week at, at least parents, so it yeah we want to encourage you and we want you to know that even if this isn't the channel that you connect with, there are a lot of really good and honest resellers out there that 
that helped us as we were turning this into a business. Mm -hmm. And and I feel like if we can do this, I, I really believe that you can do this. And do you mm -hmm. have any closing words of wisdom? Mm -hmm. She does not. Let me think on that. <laughs> she will come. You can do it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So that's it for this video. I appreciate you watching. I'm going to see you real soon on the next one. Bye-bye.